They will talk about Antonio Barbosa in years to come as the guy who popularised the Mino region, an area which you're loving, John. Is that still continuing? The love, the ongoing, unfolding love affair with the north of Portugal. How is that? Yeah, and so I, I hope to add my um, my my little contribution to the Mino re uh, region as well. So, if you would bring that map up again, I'll kind of continue the. Oh uh, yeah, let's go on this. Continue on this tour. Yes, please. There yeah. we go. So, um, you know, we've been to Vienna on many occasions and there's a there's a Celtic ruin down there, too, um, which is also on the north side on top of a hill overlooking the um, the the um, confluence there of the Lima River. Mm -hmm. um, so after we went up to um, Angora and had our lunch, we continued on to uh, uh, Caminha, which is right on the uh, south bank of the Minho River. And as Tony said, just up from there, there's a, or right there, there's a ferry that you can take across, but it was closed. That's, so I don't know the schedule of when it's open or what, but uh, they said, no, it's it's closed. So we continued on to, as you can see in the map there, uh, uh, Villa Nova de, de Servia and crossed over the bridge and then went back down through uh, through the coast of Spain. Uh, and it's just, a, all of that is just a really beautiful drive um, through the country. Uh, and then you, you come up to the village and town of Agarda or La Garda, um, depending on um, Spanish or Portuguese. All right. And um, it's right up on top of a, a high hill overlooking the, the Mino. If you recall, um, the background of Tony's that he was he was uh, that you were seeing uh, that was the Mino in the in the background of course and he is essentially standing on the south bank and you're looking across the river to the opening of the mouth of the river and the hill that was over his his left shoulder um, what well, it is the uh, is the hillside that the Celtic ruins are on, so it's right at the top. Ah, okay, can we have a look at those then? Because that was amazing, and yeah. the restoration was superb as well, wasn't it? With this uh, particular um, archaeological or historical site, uh, there you are, of course. Uh, the whole the party that went out on Sunday, mm -hmm. uh, you and Pam, and the legendary Bob and Viv as well. Um, and that's a nice view. That the, the, this is a beautiful view because you've got the immediate uh, the foreground of the old Celtic. Uh, settlement there and then beyond that uh, th there is a, the town beneath in the valley isn't there which gives yeah. you another really great clue as to how the Celtic people would have lived there with that lovely valley view maybe looking across to another Celtic settlement on the other side of the valley but this is right. a very sensitive restoration John right yeah this is a this is a restoration of what is believed to have been a typical um, uh, house there so they have these what you would call, I don't know, a veranda or a porch or something. Um, and they even have a little oven on the side there, so you can have a barbecue. Oh, really? um, Early Portuguese outdoor cooking. Yeah. So, uh, of course, this would have been, uh, well, what would it have been? It was Iberian cooking at that time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> um, yeah, and inside's quite roomy. Uh, they even have a uh, sort of a second story in there, with like a wooden loft that's built up where you can where you have your um, your sleeping area, and, and uh, so it really was quite nice. Um, there's little uh, holes in the um, opening there, so it looks like there would have been some kind of a wooden gate that would have swung open, and same gate thing with the. Oh. Same thing with the doorway. It looked like there would be a place for some kind of rudimentary hinges um, for yeah. having um, doors and stuff. So uh, it's really quite uh, quite comfortable, if you ask me. Um, and what's the date of these then? When when did they think people were living here in this? Way? Oh, these these go back. Um, well, not not necessarily these themselves. I apologize. I don't know the exact dates of these. Mm -hmm. um, but the museum, which is at the top, um, has all kinds of Celtic uh, artifacts from the area, uh, many of which date back to, um, you know, like Stonehenge um, uh, days and or the the um, Neolithic period. So that's that's okay. a that's like three thousand BC. So it's amazing. Five thousand years of history. Incredible. Um, Incredible. Yeah. So and it's. 
a plan view there which shows the proximity in which people lived and that makes sense doesn't it from a security and possibly um you know temperature cl climate control point of view that you live in in this way all sort of nestled together on yeah. the hills and you've got now, to get there, were, there were settlements here even during roman times uh when the romans first came through uh you know and this 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 um particular area they say at its maximum had four to five thousand persons uh living here um, really yeah uh, agricultural they they controlled the trade routes because it's right there actually what you're looking at in the background that's the ocean um right. and then behind you is the menia so it's right on the hill overlooking the ocean and the menia um, yeah. and uh, it's it's surrounded by a wall as well um yeah, so uh, once the Romans came in, they they preferred, of course, um, travel and trade down in the valley floors uh, where they built their roads and things. So it kind of uh, led to the diminishment of these settlements and things. So, um, what, but that, how fascinating is that, John? Uh, you know, that yeah. the, along come the Romans and say, well, it's all very well living up there on the hills. You, you guys are in a constant state of war and alert, looking down on p potential, you know, um, enemies and so on why not come down into the valley why not live a more civilized life we've got these roads <laughs> we've got villas and we've got a place where you can have a bath <laughs> exactly <laughs> they killed, no we're not having any of that you romans coming over here for your long roads <laughs> what, an amazing <laughs> time in history. what an amazing time in history oh that would have been oh, absolutely yeah. wonderful. I see. You're not a patch on 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 the things we were talking about yesterday, right? With our uh, Portugal immigrant network, a totally different um, mixture of cultures and questions. Yeah. About the time, amazing, amazing. I wonder what the Roman Roman uh, political viewpoint would have been on immigration, and uh, <laughs> would they would they call themselves uh, expats if they were uh, living in Gaul? Or <laughs> I, I think they would have just said, "You can just call me the boss." <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm we, Roman, and you're. We own this. We now, and we now own this place. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, yeah, where are your taxes? Yeah, that I guess that it would have been something a little bit like that. And I wonder, yeah. universal basic income in the Roman times. Um, well, we'll have that conversation after ten this morning. An excellent uh, contribution about that um, uh, from a blogger in our community on universal basic income. I know, I know you've got a few ideas on that, so we might talk about that today as well. Um, here's going back to your shrimp restaurant, which is what it's called, of course, uh, literally, isn't it? Come around, around. does mean yeah. shrimp. Come around, um, shrimp. And that is your beautiful view there, looking out to the sea. A nice, a, a sort of modern-looking restaurant, and yet that's what you can get to see, is it? When when oh, you're yeah, it's right there, and they have um, they have indoor seating, of course, with nice linen service. But out, but you have outdoor as well, outdoor seating. That as as you were there, and uh, oh, I see. I, I do like to see a little road sign like this telling you where you are uh, in the world. So just ninety-five kilometers away from Porto, if you are visiting Porto. And you'd like a little trip to the seaside, only 95 kilometers away and uh, pretty handy uh, for the Santiago de Compostela as well. 165 kilometers away there. Portugal's own Caminha, just eight kilometers down the road. Now, that's something um, you'll have been getting used to as well. You kind of you pretty much live on the Caminha, don't you, uh, where, where you are? Yeah, uh, our house is literally steps away from the um, Camino Santiago. And is the traffic heavy at the moment? I mean, when we came to see you, we, it was pretty popular. There were people walking up and down. There weren't. There. Is, yeah, is it the yeah, season there's, now? There's is some it, people is walking time? up and down. Um, and and from what I can tell, I would say half of them are Portuguese. So it's not oh, like really? they're. Oh yeah, there's a lot of um, of local uh, pilgrims on the road. Um, I would say it, it's not heavy, but they they're definitely there. So when I pull out. Um, you know, to to get onto the road to to the Caminha because that's that's how I have to get out of my my wow. uh, little um, housing area. Uh, so to get out onto the Camina, you know, half the time it's going to be um, you know a, a bicycle or a motorcycle or a car or a walker. So yeah. you always have to kind of keep an eye out. So because it's 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 hard to see. I can't I can't ever just sort of come to the little intersection and then go. I have to like inch my nose out a little bit further <laughs> well because it'd be a tractor a, <laughs> yeah. a bicycle a bunch of walkers coming down there on the pilgrimage and you can't tell the speed because you know you're going to have a walker coming across or then you have some guy that's a you know yes 
his bike or this, his motorbike. Uh, it's absolutely lovely where you live there. So all of village life is there and the pilgrims coming through. Uh, and there's something lovely, I think, about the the pilgrim mindset, isn't there? That when, you, when, you st when you're talking to people who are on the pilgrimage, their hearts and minds seem to be open, don't they? It's a kind of they're on a quest of some sort, aren't they? They mm -hmm. they are contemplating, uh, and you know it's a pilgrimage not just of the body walking the street. It's of the mind and and, and spirit or soul, you might say as well. Have you had any interesting conversations with people coming through there? Um, I haven't. I apologize. I um, I've said Boa Camina um, yeah. to people, but I haven't just uh, stopped and say, "Hey, what are you doing?" You know, what are you doing in my garden? <laughs> How's your Camina? Yeah. So, um, is that yeah. the customary? Is that the customary greeting then to just wish them a good a good way? Yeah, yeah. It's the customary greeting um, when you're um, saying hello to a pilgrim is just say Boa Camina. Wow, that's lovely, isn't it? Fantastic. Okay, and, and have you got any plans to join them? Are you going to walk from your house along the way and a little bit as well? Is that not your thing? No, not not really my thing. But uh, <laughs> yeah, that, it, it, if I was to do it, it would be from my house. Yeah, <laughs> I would go from my house to to up, up down the road to, to the uh, cafe. In many ways, when you go to the shops, you are walking the Camino, aren't you? Oh well, yeah, I've walked it. Uh, I've walked it dozens of times. <laughs> yes. Yeah, oh, just not very, just just a few kilometers. <laughs> <laughs> right down to the cafe and back. Now, yeah. uh, not far from your house, lovely picture from Owen, which I think you took. This is I did. also you. You're you're the photographer here, aren't you? I am. And, and this is what Tony's talking about, isn't it? This is the lifestyle that's enjoyable up in the north of Portugal. So a bit of trout fishing going on there. Yeah, we have uh, brown trout, and um, we have the salmon run going on right now. So. Um, <laughs> Yeah, we were seeing just hundreds of salmon coming upstream, uh, you know, easily um, what I'm um, to two feet. So what is that? You know, like um, 60, 60 centimeters. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, that's, yeah. that's the size of the salmon. They're coming. They're, they're, they are going up to breed at the top of the river. A lot of them. Yeah. Um, and so they didn't seem too interested in feeding, though. They, they're, they're more on a mission to, you know, get up the river. Oh, great. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's I, I I'm not skilled enough at this point to figure out what they would be interested in um, biting on, <laughs> right? Um, but uh, you know, my I, even if they did, um, I doubt I would be successful because <laughs> my uh, my rod and reel I have like ten pound test line on it, um, and that's not the weight of the fish that you're catching, that's right. the weight of the drag, um, and so uh, a, a two foot a two foot salmon is going to put like easily 50 pounds of weight on that in terms of a drag. So I was like, uh, that would be very, very, very difficult to pull, pull in a big salmon. I'd have to, I'd have to let it, I'd let, have to let it run and get exhausted before uh, trying to, to uh, reel it in. And I, I'm, I'm not uh, once in the, I mean, I used to always uh, fish, catch and eat. Um, but the last 10 years or so, I'm more of a catch and release. So, you know, catching catching a salmon and and virtually exhausting it so that it would you know die of exhaustion. I don't I don't want to do that. So right. um, yeah, so that that wouldn't be so good. So I, I have to figure out what what to do on that. Yeah, but just seeing them in in the water must be absolutely wonderful. Yeah. But in this case, if I did catch it, I probably would eat it. Okay, <laughs> to be done. But but I think they they outsmarted the pair of you on this particular day, though, didn't they? <laughs> yeah, I don't know if they outsmarted us or just were completely disinterested. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, that is such a lovely view. Uh, absolutely brilliant to go on a, on this little tour with you as well, John. This morning, uh, what other highlights are on here? Tui, what's that about? Then that's an unusual name, isn't it? Tui. Yeah, Tui, Tui is actually just on the opposite bank of the Minho from Valencia. Right. So uh, on this little um, uh, loop, if you will, after visiting the Celtic ruin and then going back, we just went back up the uh, and crossed the across the bridge and then back along the coastal road to the A3 and just just went the, the fast road home. But uh, just at that apex where you see the the turn back down south. Um, if you went north there, then that would be Valencia, and then Tui is right there. So, um, 
you know, you can easily spend a day uh, in either in either uh, village, um, looking at the history and the, and the, the the battlements and the fortress. In Valencia, there's a lovely castle um, wall, kind of almost like uh, Obidosh. Um, oh yes, yeah. not quite as not quite as big and and fancy as that, but the same kind of concept where you have the the castle walls, and then inside the castle walls, you have the shops and the the stores and things like that so it's actually a great place to buy uh linens pillows and blankets and things like that oh, and, and, and it's, it's, you're, you're getting this lie of the land then the best places to buy different things i mean you, you don't actually have to leave ponte lima do you because every every other monday is it there's a massive market there and all of the world comes to ponte lima but there are these speciality places all around as well are there up here in this mina region yeah um i mean yeah, I mean there is the market and everything, but uh, you're not necessarily getting the uh, the same kind of uh, quality or maybe yeah. the the same kind of variety. Um, and so uh, Valencia is uh, pretty well known and Tui uh, actually for uh, furniture and linens. Um, so there's a lot there's a lot of good things you can get up there. Can't wait to get back up there. It will of course be on one of our Discovery Weekend uh, tours. Uh, being yeah. up there, probably based in Ponte Lima, um, but we are we are we're open to uh, other hosting and sort of guesting ideas, and we just want to take in as much of the local area as we can on the second weekend of every month, starting in September, a different Portuguese town or city, and the Gumpers meeting up and having a great time, just as we did. It was a prototype, John, really, when we met you, and yeah. you so beautifully hosted us in Ponte Lima. We had a beautiful weekend there. Um, and thank you for sharing this uh, road trip with us today. Um, there are, we're talking of salmon uh, uh, and, and cook, uh, catching and cooking salmon. A little bit of um, news here, apparently. Uh, the disposable instant grill does not come with that food, um, they uh, <laughs> apparently, uh, in it. A customer complained uh, here from, I think, probably from Facebook. Oh, Twitter. Customer complained that when they opened their barbecue, the food wasn't there. Uh, when I said the picture was just an indication of what you can cook on it, she said she had four more at home in the freezer ready to open and cook and have that delightful food. She there. bought four of the barbecues thinking they were, like, ready to make uh, Yes, TV and they were, they were in... <laughs> They were in the freezer awaiting combustion. Now, what she what she needed, uh, that particular customer who thought the disposable instant grill came with all of that, was one of these. Did you have any better luck than me, John, on how to pronounce this thing here? Uh, Owen very kindly has sent us this. It, it's what an amazing looking device. Well, it's the thing we were talking about earlier on, the cane sabia. Oh, uh, the, that's the, uh, the, the medieval torture uh, device. Well, that's how you saw it, John. <laughs> <laughs> Others might catch a salmon and put it in the right place underneath it and have and, their lunch and incinerate it. Incinerate <laughs> <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, do, not, do not cook your your food Jetson style at midday. You probably want to be waiting till you know later on in the afternoon as as the uh, sun um, cools a little bit. But that is that's the thing. Thank you very much, Owen, for sending that in. And that is the picture of what is it? Oh, the Py Pyrelia forest. I think we'll go with. Uh, Pyrelia forest. I think so. Yeah. And just John, finally, then thank you so much for joining us. L love a bit of uh, Tony time. And when Joao de Nort talks uh, to us about his uh, love and passion for the north of Portugal. Actually, before we move on to uh, uh, UBI, um, you, you of course, will be creating, I think, publishing blogs and videos about your love of the north of Portugal. How's that going at the moment? Uh, yeah, I think the working on the general uh, format, if you will. So I, yeah. I think Things like what we did, like like uh, last month, I think we did um, one where I took you into the Goresh and yes. uh, told you about a cafe up there and things and some waterfalls. Um, so I'll just I'll just basically take you along on some little exploration um, adventures that we have um, yes. as we explore different bits. So um, if you bring that map up real real briefly, I'll say yes, I think sure. next next month. Um, if you look right smack dab in the middle of that, um, there's a big mountain range there. Yes. Uh, and the there's a um, a sanctuary or a, a pilgrimage spot called the uh, Sanctuary de San Joao. Yeah. Um, and so there's roads that go up to the top of the ridge line up there. Um, so I'll, I'll show that. Um, 
And then over to the right, can't see it quite in this picture, but over to the right further, um, you pretty much run into Spain on that side and where the Goresh, uh, <clears throat> where the Goresh meets, uh, meets España. Um, and so I kind of want to explore that region of, of uh, the Minho because it's, um, it's the basically the far northwest, no, sorry, far northeast of the tip of Portugal. Wow. Um, so if you look at a map of Portugal, um, you kind of have this little crown and then it dips down a bit and then it comes. So it's that that corner um, corner bit of the north that I'm curious about. Very good. So well, we can look forward to finding out more about that with you and on your monthly visit here and publishing those separately. What you'll be blogging and videoing, will you? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not I'm not a um, skillful blogger or anything. Uh, at this point, it's mostly what I'm doing with you, but um, uh, I haven't I don't have necessarily a website or anything like that. Well, we're very grateful to you. 